Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They released a couple new Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse teasers, so we'll break it all down. There's a couple big Easter eggs that give us some more information about what's going on between Miles Morales' Spider-Man and Miles G. Morales, as they're calling him, on this alternate Earth. There was also some news about the actual release date being pushed, things being delayed, things going on behind the scenes, so I'll explain what's going on with that. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. The first big thing is this new scene. It seems like a work in progress or it might get worked into beyond the Spider-Verse in some way in the next couple of years where Aaron Davis is still the Prowler. You can see him in his suit here teaching a slightly younger looking Miles G. Morales as they're calling him. That's what they're calling this Prowler version of Miles from Earth 42. And it looks like they're stealing medical supplies from the Sinister Six cartel and giving them to his mother at her hospital just because she doesn't have enough to treat her patients. Like, she's very thankful, but doesn't completely realize what's actually going on. Like, oh, some vigilante left me supplies. There was also some tie-in material in some of the art books that they released that teased what's going on with this Miles G. Morales alternate reality Prowler version of the character, too. Confirming that he's kind of a Robin Hood type of character, vigilante, stealing to help his mother, stealing from the rich aka the Sinister Six cartel, giving to the poor. And if you look at a lot of his moves too, they're very Spider-Man-like in the way that he's web-slinging around, kind of, using Prowler tech, almost doing the exact same thing. He looks very similar, or his moves look very similar to the regular Miles Morales Spider-Mans. He just doesn't have any actual webbing, so he's using practical technology. And it seems like his mother in this reality in Earth-42 doesn't know that he's becoming the Prowler or has become the Prowler. She probably only knows that there's a vigilante out there that calls themselves the Prowler that's in the news who helps her, gives people things that they need. But just like regular Miles Morales' mother, she also hasn't totally figured out that this Miles G. Morales, her Miles Morales, hasn't become the Prowler on their world. So a lot of people were wondering what's going to happen after the end of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse because they tease this big fight between the two of them like he's slowly escaping using his shocker ability. It's meant to be a big callback to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse where Peter B. Parker used his abilities to escape while Miles was talking to him. So Miles is going to start Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse doing the same thing, escaping from this situation. And even though the way they play the music, like the big reveal, they want you to think like Miles G. Morales is a villain. The idea is that they're trying to tell you through all these tie-ins and these teasers that really he's a vigilante. He's not an outright villain. That was what the regular Miles Morales Spider-Man was talking to Earth-42 Aaron Davis about before he realized what was really going on. He was trying to tell him about his uncle Aaron before he died. He wanted to be good, but he didn't know how. So they want to let you know that that's kind of going on with this Miles G. Morales Prowler version of the character. So a lot of people were wondering if they're actually going to fight or if they're going to take a hard left turn and just surprise everyone and he won't be a villain, like he'll actually help this version of Spider-Man Miles Morales. My early theory in some of my previous videos is that he would eventually do that, but there'd be like a small fight, like you have to have them fight just a little bit. But the end game idea is that Prowler Miles Morales, Miles G. Morales is not going to wind up being a villain. My other early theory is that he would eventually wind up fighting the Sinister Six cartel on his Earth and they would set those group of characters up as bigger villains on Earth-42. And they won't walk back Miles Morales' spider bite or anything like that. Like, he'll go back to his ultimate universe, Earth. But at the end of the day, Miles G. Morales will just continue becoming a better version of the Prowler and become more of a good character, so to speak, more of a traditional good character, trying to defeat the Sinister Six cartel. They're a real big group, super powerful on this Earth, so it's not something that he would completely wrap up during Beyond the Spider-Verse. Like, he would just continue fighting the Sinister Six cartel on his Earth into adulthood. So part of the idea is that even in an alternate reality, even though things went completely terrible for him, like his father died, he didn't become Spider-Man, the traditional type of hero, things still worked out like he's still good in this reality, fundamentally. There was a longer character description for this Prowler Miles Morales 2 that they released. So it says, Miles G. Morales, aka the Prowler, is the alternate reality version of Miles who grew up completely different from him. This version of the character was never bitten by a radioactive spider and doesn't have any superpowers, but he has fallen into the role of becoming a vigilante, the Prowler. Notice that they say vigilante, not villain. Under the tutelage of his uncle Aaron, Miles comes face to face with his other version of himself and realizes that because one thing dropped the other way, everything has changed due to the butterfly effect, where one small change can later result in larger changes to a deterministic, nonlinear system. In this case, an entire reality, says director Justin K. Thompson, internally we decided to call this parallel world version Miles G. Morales to avoid confusion. 
So I think that just confirms that we'll see like a very brief Miles versus Miles G Morales at the beginning of Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse until they both realize what's going on. Oh, we're not bad people. We want to help each other. While this is happening, Gwen assembles her own team, paying off her line from earlier at the movie at the beginning about never finding the right band to be in. The team is meant to be the right band here. It's everyone from the first movie in addition to Spider-Punk who's come back, Spider-Man India, and Spider-Bite, who all end the movie entering the portal to Earth-42 to rescue Miles. So Beyond the Spider-Verse is meant to pick up immediately after these moments, like literally right as he's escaping the punching bag. Spider-Gwen's team will be way more focused on stopping the spot and saving Miles' father. You can let me know if you think the spot will wind up killing one of his parents or if they'll make it in time to save both of them. They really want you to wonder if one of them is going to survive. But here's the thing about the spot. I think the reason why they kept hyping up the evolution of Miles' spider stinger shock ability is to show that he can drain the spot's dark matter energy just like he drains other types of energy. It'll just mess Miles up big time absorbing all that dark matter. Early theory, he also starts bleeding a little from his armpits just because it messes him up so bad, paying off the jokes about his new suit in the movie. A couple of different characters repeat that joke about him bleeding from the armpits in the movie. And like Peter B. Parker says, they'll build him a new suit at the end of the movie. There was a montage earlier in the movie about building new suits. They're all based on comic book suits. There was even a cape-based suit that he designed, which is a reference to the Spider-Man cape jokes earlier in the first movie. And it's a no on the cape. I think it's cool. Take that off. It's disrespectful. <laughs> Spider-Man doesn't wear a cape. The other big thing that they tease much earlier in the film, too, is that Miles leaves his mother, like this is the last time that he sees her in this movie, saying that he promised that he would come back and he promised that he would have a nice cake that's not all messed up. So early prediction is that's how they end Beyond the Spider-Verse. They stop the spot from collapsing all of reality. Spider-Man 2099 comes around on him and finally leaves him alone. And they have some shawarma tag scene at the end of the movie where he comes home to his parents with an ice cake and introduces them to the rest of his friends that he mentioned at the beginning of Across the Spider-Verse. And they all eat cake that he brings back with him, including Spider-Ham. Like it would be funny to see his parents meeting Spider-Ham. He was also trying to tell his parents his secret identity like he was about to tell his mother a couple times. Then he tells the wrong Earth-42 mother. He'll probably tell his parents that he is Spider-Man at the end of the movie too. The other thing about the spot in Beyond the Spider-Verse is that he's doing all this like collapsing reality because he thinks that Miles was responsible for everything or he at least blames him for everything that happened. And he thinks that Miles doesn't take him seriously. Miles sounds like he's going to try and talk him down a little bit, in addition to depowering him with his stinger ability, but instead of locking him up for the rest of all time like a normal supervillain, early theory is that Miles wins him over so he chills out and eventually tries to help him and just uses power, his brains for good in the future. During the comics, the spot was both a villain and a hero, so I think they're just playing on that same idea, like he could go either way. They'll end things in a more hopeful way and the spot will actually start doing some good. Just to address all the stuff that's happening behind the scenes, there's been a lot of news about the actual movie itself, the making of the movie. Originally, it was supposed to come out in early 2024, but a lot of people that are working on the movie, even Haley Steinfeld, said that she hasn't recorded any dialogue for it yet. And when she was recording dialogue for Across the Spider-Verse, that happened years before the movie came out. So the whole idea is that if she hasn't even started recording voiceover dialogue, they're way, way for that. Like, it's going to take way longer for them to complete. And then a lot of people behind the scenes, a lot of animators were complaining about the working conditions. So the producers, Phil Lord, Chris Miller, said that they have no actual set release date. They would just continue making the movie until it was like they'll take as long as they need, which is code for it's going to take way longer to make the movie. So right now, everybody assumes that it's going to be 2025 before the movie comes out. It could be a little bit longer, but I think just to be a little more optimistic, we'll say it'll take an extra year for them to finish it because they have already started working on it. It's just that they're not nearly as far along in the process as people would have assumed. In related news, that also puts that movie closer to the release date of Spider-Man 4 with Tom Holland live action in the MCU. Now, that also might wind up getting delayed because of all the strikes that are happening right now. There's a writer's strike. There's an actor strike that might wind up happening. A lot of the big studios like Sony, Marvel, even DC canceled their Comic-Con plans. So there's no big Hall H panel happening for anybody. But there's still a bunch of stuff that's coming out. The stuff that's getting delayed is stuff that's like a couple years out. For example, Spider-Man 4. 
I've already done a bunch of videos about this, but the big thing that's happening, big connection between Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse and Spider-Man 4 and the Tom Holland live-action Spider-Man movies is that they're now developing live-action Miles Morales movies too. They didn't say exactly how that's going to go down, but there was rumors that he was going to appear in some way in Spider-Man 4. A little while ago when Across the Spider-Verse hit theaters, Shamik Moore was talking about this too. Like he really wanted to play the live action Miles Morales. And one of my early theories a couple years ago was that they would eventually just move some of these animated characters into live action because they're blending so many live action elements into Across the Spider-Verse and Beyond the Spider-Verse. They even said that there were some deleted scenes where they did more live action crossover with the animation. Like they had the Venom cameo scene where he goes to Venom's Earth in the movie. They were bigger scenes like that where you see live action elements and animated elements together. The reason why they wound up cutting a lot of that stuff out of the movie is because they said it just looked too ridiculous, if that's even possible. So if we do see some of these animated Spider-Verse characters show up in Avengers 6 Secret Wars, I think that they'll try to tune that just a little bit just to make it a little bit better. For example, it'd be really cool to see them substitute the Spider-Force, like Spider-Man 2099's giant team of Spider-Man from across the multiverse, for the Thor core in the traditional Secret Wars story. We'll probably start getting some more Beyond the Spider-Verse teasers later this year, so of course I'll do more videos as we see more Easter eggs or deleted scenes, so leave all your requests in the comments below. Everyone click here for my Secret Invasion Episode 3 video, and click here for that new Fantastic Four Doctor Doom Secret Invasion trailer video too. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.